you're trying to find your groove you're trying to find your tribe or people or whatever right mm -hmm. and sometimes what ends up happening for a lot of people is because they're whatever there is this is a story but they're small they're broken they're alone and then all of a sudden they end up taking people into their life that are toxic right right whereas they need somebody it, yeah they don't exactly they don't want to be alone they'd rather be with this person who tortures them than be alone and that's the truth and it's like Welcome to the Just Life Podcast. It is our hope that the gritty, real, and uncensored insights we share with you here will help you get your shit together as you explore and discover what it takes to live your best life on your terms. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Just Life Podcast, episode 78, where we're gonna dive into the deepness and the relatedness of social programming. What's actually controlling you? What's actually taking you out of your life where you feel that you might be uh, out of control. Well, we're going to go a little bit deeper into it. We're talking with our guest today, Vern, and our man, Devin. And are gonna see what systems are at the deep root of what's causing your unhappiness, potentially, where we're able to create some peace. Let's go have a closer look. Welcome, y'all. You're right, it does kind of come back down to perspective, but like when you Is first see here, somebody and, and at the level that they're at, wherever they're at in the game, mm -hmm. that becomes kind of like your first impression. Here. So you carry yeah, that. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Carry I, that with you. And, 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 sure and you with that, that said, the, the person on the other side who's being observed, that's their fear. <laughs> their fear is that, oh, Devin's gonna see me today in a, in a bad spot, I'm feeling low, and he's gonna think I'm a piece of shit because I'm sharing my vulnerabilities or... Because he's so busy judging other people, right? Right, yeah, so right. Of course he's gonna judge himself. And I, this like kind of falls now into the whole idea of like that social programming or the idea that um, you can be made to believe shit even though it's not your own thoughts. Yeah. Uh, I think I said this to you guys like one of the first times I ever met. Yeah, you can be made. Yeah, totally. The, the one guy um, that I met, his dad told him because he was trying to show his dad, you know, some of his raps, and of course he wants to because he loves his dad, right? He wants mm. his dad's approval. We, oh, I for think sure. we all kind of do at some level, and and his dad goes, "You're not Eminem. Stop it." Mm. And then for the rest of his oh, life, he tough, carried man. that with him. That's yeah. tough. Even though he's an incredibly talented dude, he yeah. just never really let it out. So now he's judging himself. Yeah. And that programming became his I'll, own. I'll take it. A, I'll take it a layer deeper with social programming. I was my kids and I. We always joke around and we do these. Uh, we do these Harry Potter quizzes. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to embrace their their love and their passion for Harry Potter. And uh, like last night, we were my son made up this really cool uh, wizard game. Where you can like we we made wands and and each wizard has a dice. It's fucking dope because so because made up his own game. Well, do you ever, you know remember when you were a kid? Do you guys ever play guns when you were a kid? Yeah, I wasn't allowed. Well, yeah, you yeah, <laughs> but I totally did. Yeah, 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 right. So when we were a kid, the big problem was bang, I got you. No bang, I got you. Yeah. And then there's a big argument between all the kids about who got who. Yeah. Right. Oh my so god. The are they, now. They've got wizard wands, and it's like uh, Expelliarmus, but then you say. Stupefy, and I said, "No, I got you with Expelliarmus, and you got me with Stupefy. Who won?" Well, as I give you uh, a spell, I roll a dice, and you roll a dice. Oh, yeah. And if my dice is bigger it's than like your dice, TV, right? yeah, you got hit. If your dice is smaller than my dice, but if your dice is bigger, you you defended my spell, yes. right? It's, it was that's just the, like that's the principles of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, okay, yeah, and and all those board games that have been around for like thirty years, where everybody's hanging out in the basement. Yeah, it was just it was a simple way for him to. How did you? How did it come across? Like, where did that realization to use the dice? my son thought of it. He, he was like, and then he was like, yeah, dad. And like, you know, there's certain spells that if you don't roll above a three, then it wasn't a powerful enough spell. You're not a powerful enough wizard on that spell. <laughs> and I was like, damn, yeah. I'm like, all right. There was, he had all kinds of like little micro elaborations in there. Right. You should introduce was like, him to maybe those, I should. Cause those tabletop games. dude, can we have a, can we have a conversation about that? Because one of the things I'm really struggling with as a dad right now is finding and it's not really my job, but it, but it kind of is because of how we're structured. Is is, is having a, a good community for my son, yeah, yeah. like where he can totally. connect with people. And he's way into Lego. I'm sure he'd be into that. Like he would be into that it kind of a like thing. Anyway, never, yeah. So I've never played it. Um, that was all part of many of the things that that were just not even on the radar growing up, being so strict and right, right, right. But my friends, yeah. They talk about it all the time, and I play versions of that 
but it's in real time and it's on the computer. Right, right, right. And I think my kids are probably like that as well. Mm. Like it, there, there is a curiosity to it. Yeah, I think it's all right. So, so circling back to the social programming, where I was going with that was we do these. That now they ask me, oh, dad, you know, when did this person, die, which movie did this person die in, or who was the professor of dark arts in this movie, or whatever, right? So they ask me all these different questions, and um, they love it. We're doing these little Harry Potter quizzes, but what's interesting about it is they'll we are doing multiple choice, and they're asking me things that I don't even know the answers to. So I would go like, oh, it's it's whatever, it's five, and really movie number five, and really it was movie number six, and they'd be like, oh, you're close, and they go, oh, is it six? And they go, yeah, and I'd be like, damn, and they're like, no, you got it right. Do you see where I'm going with that? How subtle that is? Yeah. You guys don't even realize it because you spent fucking twenty years in school. So I have it that my first attempt at the question was incorrect. Mm. Therefore I'm wrong yeah. and I made a mistake yeah, totally. and that's not okay. And they're like, no, you got it right. Right. Cause I, I did it on my second attempt and that's actually how life works. Yes. Right. You, you make mistakes and you learn and you course correct and you come back and, and it's all good. In fact, it doesn't work any other way. Right. It's totally inauthentic if it goes any other way than that. But yet I have it because of that social programming in school, mm -hmm. a big red X I'm bad and wrong, and I'm dumb. Yeah. And that's the right. only, that's your it. only focus. That's it's right. On, on that thing. Not that I got it right <laughs> on the second try, that I got the first one wrong. Right. That's... That I got that last night, and I was like, "Damn!" I tried to explain it to my kids. It's hilarious. <laughs> now, okay, so I just want to kind of peel that apart a little bit more. So that was your genuine feeling, or was that just your way of trying to create and communicate that message? How no, deep that does that actually go? Yeah, no. It for me, it, it was I got it wrong. Like there's no, there was no. It was so absolute for you. Yeah, the second one, it was like, oh, I just guessed. It didn't count for me, and for them, it counted. It was like, no, you got it, <laughs> right? Like you asked me a test. Wow. I got the answer wrong. How incredible! So I get, oh, I get no points. What are you talking about? I don't get a second chance. And that is the occurring. That's I have it that that's from school. Yeah, you were, right. you were prepared to stop. Yeah, I was like, done. Oh, I got it wrong. Like, right. we're done here. They're like, no, try again. <laughs> right? I'm like, so you, oh, yeah. Your kids actually coach you through that. My kids coach me through that. And and they, so and this is, this is the, like, the, the, eyes, the youthful eyes versus the calloused. You know what I mean? You, the, all the times you've gone through these experiences. Yeah, and, and I see, I see, because, I mean, I think you are aware that we homeschool, right? Yeah, this, that's, so that's is, me also. You, you homeschool? Yeah, so check it oh, out. Oh, dope. I've fought tooth and nail against every single person in my family because they are o their only belief is that traditional schooling system is the only way that you can have an education. And why, and Devin, is it that way? <laughs> Social programming. Bingo! <laughs> I.E. banking. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I fully, I'm fully behind this. Um, and and I, can, I can elaborate. I can go a little bit deeper. But before I do, the idea is like 90 percent of everything that we are as human beings is learned behavior it's not it's not an instinct there are some things that are instincts the flight or flight mechanisms Dude. Right? Uh, you got to eat or you'll die sleep these are these are instinctual but nobody teaches you to eat you just fucking eat I learned how to be in business class yesterday from monkey see monkey do. Yeah. I got an upgrade and I'm like sitting there being like, I got a menu and shit. And I'm like, dude, do I got to pay for this? How's this all work? I'm literally creeping on the guy beside me. They handed him a hot like napkin towel thing. Yeah. And then they handed me one and I'm just sitting there, poor kid going, <laughs> what the fuck is this what for? And then I'm looking at two or three different seats and everyone's wiping their hands with it. I'm like, oh, so I start wiping my hands with it. I don't even know if that's what it's for. This is what I saw these two motherfuckers doing. So this, <laughs> the nature of that is how deep that actually goes is you've actually created programs inside your mind that allow you to adapt in the environment. So yeah. some people are really good at that where other people are not and they'll freeze. And so this, that also is part of your programming. Yeah, oh, for sure. So, um, if that's the case, if everything we learn now is learned behavior, we are literally a product of our environment. And so, I look at uh, the traditional schooling system as a glorified babysitter. Mm -hmm. But, let's take it even further. The teachers that are there don't give a shit. They may have, at some point, wanted to become a teacher, but yo, well, we're all not, adults here, it's, it, This is generalized. You need a job. Too much. Right, right. Uh, well, well, no, this, this is generalized. I have to go There's certainly, general, like, the exception. After. Mm -hmm. so, so teachers needed a job, and that was just what they, a lot of them just ended up in that place. 
right? I know my music teacher, for example, again, this is just examples and generalization. My music teacher wanted to be in a band, wanted to be a famous musician. At some point in time, his career didn't go the way that he wanted and he decided, fuck it, I'm going to be a music teacher. Now he's a music teacher for the next 15 years and then I encounter him for the first time. Dead. His eyes are dead. His dream is dead. He's dead man walking. Mm -hmm. He hates his life. He hates the people he's around. He half-asses all of his education. And this is just one of hundreds of examples that well, I could give of teachers that I encountered through my traditional schooling system. Yeah. So as that, as that progressed, I started to realize these adults don't know what the fuck they're doing. Oh, for they're sure. They're just yeah. here to take care of us while our parents are busy trying to take care of us too. Yeah. So I fully respect them. I get it. I understand you're in this position, but kids are shitty Yeah. and you probably didn't have the resilience to deal with that. Yeah. And so you shut down at some point and now it's you, the faculty against the students and it becomes a control mechanism. So when I try and discipline my kid, I don't discipline when I try and educate my child on his behaviors, his programming, I know, I trust myself to have his best interest in mind. I'll use this as an example. If you throw a temper tantrum over the fact that you can or cannot get something, it's not going to get you that thing here or anywhere else in your lifetime. Throwing a temper tantrum is not going to get you what you want. You can, however, sell me on it and sometimes you win. Sometimes you lose. And I'll watch the parents around me look at me like, you're going to let your son talk to you like that? Of course I'm going to let my son talk to me like that. He's a human being. He has his own thoughts. He has his own feelings. He has his own opinion on how the world works. And he has to figure it the fuck out. Because when I die, he's on his own. Mm -hmm. So it's my job to help him figure that out. It's not my job to have authority over him. Yeah, you don't own your kid. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you're so preparing parents, him for life. Exactly. And so a lot of parents tend to think that they have to have authority, they have to maintain authority over their children so yeah. they can continue to teach them. Well, because they don't want to look bad. Right. <laughs> now, I just, I just implore everybody to go back to when you were a child and when your parents treated you like shit and did those things and it, became, it came down to an authority thing and not a lesson. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that you weren't seeing the lesson, the authority thing still stopped everything. Well, and to be fair though, <clears throat> like, both with the teachers and with parents, I mean, a lot of times we're doing the best we can with the resources and the knowledge that we have, right? And yeah, our yeah, parents yeah. are well-intended when they tell you, hey, look, man, quit trying to be Eminem. Right. That, <laughs> yes, the the, yes, the yes. truth is that actually came from love mm -hmm. because he was trying to protect his son. Because he yeah. was like, you know what? You don't have the talent and the skills or whatever the fuck he thought. His programming. You're, yeah, his programming he was. once in his life. That's right. His don't dream. go do that because you're going to get hurt. Yes, now he's protecting Right, so he's, he's, he's putting that thank on the kid. For, but, thank you for taking this. Yeah. Because, yeah, it is that um, the right. idea that you do love that person so deeply and genuinely. Right? Rather than what you're doing is to, is to build him up to have the grit to deal with said failure mm -hmm. should it arrive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then with the teachers, what I want to circle back to is, to your point, you did mention that, hey, yeah, some of them are well intended of course there's great teachers out there really good people just to circle back to banking same with banking there's a lot of good people who work in banking and they don't realize the damage that they're doing to people so yeah. it's the same with teachers they come in like an fbi agent or the president of the united states being like i'm gonna make a fucking difference but then you <laughs> yeah. get plugged into a system right that will not allow you to create Bureaucracy such difference because it doesn't operate that way it yeah. just doesn't work that way then you go Fuck, and you—you now you're stuck in the system, and you get broken down inside of that. You're 20 years in, and you're just like cranky. You got coffee breath, and you're just trying to get through the fucking day. Yeah, you know, because you're like, I don't give a shit what I say to you, Devin. The way they see it is, I'm not going to make a difference for you anyway. Yeah, because we're stuck in here. So good luck out there. And more to that, those teachers aren't just dealing with those students; they're dealing with those students' parents programming. <laughs> It runs fucking deep, right? This goes so deep, right? <laughs> and their parents before them and the parents before them. Like, my dad, when he was in school, if he acted up in any way, they threw textbooks at him and, like, beat him with yardsticks and shit. Like, so we've come a long way. You know what I mean? I don't blame my parents for, you know, their shortcomings or, or, or downfalls. I, I actually admire the fact that they worked through it all. Yeah. To get me to the place of where I'm at, allowing me the opportunity now to learn from their lessons and, and continue to move past that. I love what you're saying here because I think it was said on this podcast a few weeks ago, or I can't remember, but what's interesting is that we're, we're all connected. So your grandparents, your great-grandparents, we're all 
working through and dealing with a hangover mm -hmm. of their upbringing. Yes. And then, wow, the, and then their really kids and, then, way to put that. and your, yeah, totally your parents, you're, you're looking at it going, okay, some's right. Some's wrong. Some, they fucked up. Some, they were just figuring out mm -hmm. like we're making mistakes all the time too, but it's just constantly an evolution of your son's going to adopt a bunch of shit from you and some of your limitations and, He's going to expand on a bunch of shit. He's going to create some of his own stuff. And you know yeah. what I mean? And then the, the, the intention and the hope is that your grandson is far, I don't want to use the word better, but you know, he's, he's a far more larger contributor. He's more productive. He's more a, effective. He's an expanded version yeah. of Devin, right? Yes. Of all your good qualities. That's yeah. your grandson. And, and my know? dad always said to me when I was growing up, he's like, I want you to be a better version of me. Yeah, totally. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to do that. <laughs> right. And so I kind of adapted that same thought. Like I want my son to be a better version of me. I know where I screwed up. I know all the things, you know, and here further to it. Could you imagine like every day going to school and getting trained to hide under your desk in case an atomic bomb went off? <laughs> How fucked up is that? Well, dude, I just saw a clip like on Instagram or some shit the other day. They were doing a uh, a gun fucking walkthrough, like an intruder in the school with a goddamn machine gun. Yeah. It was like some, and it was like literally the police and everything were walking through it with the students showing them. And there was a, a, a fake perp and they were, yeah. We're in a different time. It's like, that, holy that's fuck. Even more, that's even more to it. The that's, education is like, behind, so now fast forward to me, my childhood, I had to hide from bullies. Right? See, there was a point in time where I thought that I was the best and then somebody checked me. Right? <laughs> and when that happened, I didn't have the resilience to overcome it or move past it, so I became the victim. Playing the victim actually got me results. Uh, the principal, I sat down had a chat with him. He had a child psychology degree and so this, I was like a perfect guinea pig for him. Right? And so it fit into his. So it got me what I wanted, which is like out of class and shit. You know what I mean? I got special treatment. My parents loved me a little bit more, I think. You know what I mean? Like it was just a little bit more. And so it became part of my program. Right, right, right. Now so there's, a, there's now, a payoff to being the victim. Yeah. There's a payoff. Yeah. In a weird, in a weird way, right? So now we, we are moving into this new world where us as bullies and bullied kids are the parents. Yes. And we're looking at our children. We're going, shit, we, don't, we still didn't get this figured out. We're under the impression, and this is programming, we're under the impression that that's just the way life is. There is bad, shitty, violent people, and there are good, nice people who get taken advantage of. And so you have to be one or the other. And that's programming. We're programming these children to become bullies or to become bullied. We're programming them. Yeah, man, that, that is, that's so legit, man. I, I, I totally pick up what you're laying down. I I, so I try to communicate to, um, to my kid different ideas so now it's not oh there are bad people and there are good people it's just oh there are people who don't have the same knowledge as you or there are people who have different experiences in their life and they express themselves in ways that are not serving them or others you know and like so if you put people in this box <coughs> your expectation of how people should be you're basically saying first of all that that person's not good enough well, if, if, if you're not exactly who I want you to be, you don't fit in my world. Yes. Rather than me being like, hmm, I wonder what it is about Devin that makes him that way. Whether right. you're an asshole or you're timid. Yes. I go, hey, man, I'm just wondering, like, you seem really passive. Like, what's that about? And, or, and further, you know? <laughs> yeah, so you're kind of going down that rabbit hole of um, uh, uh, radical gratefulness is how I perceive things. Is I am grateful for every person that's in my life. And I've had some serious pit bulls, man. Like, <laughs> yo, shout out Will Hayes. W one day, this guy was, he's like king shit. He's always around. He, he ran the scene and I was the loser. Like I had no friends, I, I didn't fit in. I'm the white kid that raps. Like this was when it was still kind of like, Ugh, you know, can white people do that? <laughs> <laughs> and I, so I realized that I needed power on my side. So I reached out to this guy. And, and slowly kind of brought him into my world and, and, and we were, you know, BFFs for a really long period of time. And it kind of, the, the relationship took a different turn. His true nature came out, who he is and why he is the way he is. And uh, eventually I had to say that was enough and not allow him in my life anymore just because he was causing more damage than good. Yeah. I and that takes, that takes day, something. grateful for the experience of having him as my friend because he taught me so much and I had to accept him as he was or there was no way that relationship was ever going to go on as mm. long as it did. I'm talking years. Yeah. 
right? So this is great because it ties back into social programming. Mm -hmm. Because what society says is, oh, I used to hang out with this guy named Will Hayes. Turns out he's an asshole. Fuck him. Right. Right? Like, yeah. like is that not the, the, the general... Right? That's what we're taught. It's and like, yo, hey, everywhere we go on Facebook, on social media, we all look. Yeah. And we see what? this. That's how people do react. You break up with an ex, and all of a sudden the ex yeah, is shit. Yeah. Right? And, like, and now it's a slander it, game. And the, tr the, <laughs> the reality of it is, is okay, if you're going to go date somebody, look at how they treat their exes. Because if they treat them like shit, guess what? You're next on the list. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like that, yeah, right? Totally. So, to what you're saying, what I love is that you're like, yeah, yo, like, the, what's true is that we, we hung out, it was great, I got these experiences, then I realized oh we're not compatible yeah. there's actually nothing wrong with him he is the way he is he's yeah. had his history he's had his past i got so much value out of that relationship and we both parted ways yeah and i'm grateful for it it's like that's actually how marriage can go right that's how Why fucking business be... partnerships can go that's <laughs> how like hey man we've grown together we've expanded beyond ourselves and i see the direction you're going sometimes we butt heads nothing wrong with that hey you know what how can i help you get on to your next level yeah Cause and can I you think, help me? Cause you're really good at this thing. And then we, you know, you go find a new partner and we go do our own better thing. than when you found them. I think if that, if that's a general principle, like forget the golden rule, do unto others as you would have done unto you. Like that's cool and all that's a good baseline. Well, I would but, say not forget it, but that's kind but, of, it's kind of par. Isn't that par for the course? I, I think that, that <laughs> should, I think that that should just be instinctual bottom mm. level nature. I'm saying elevate it to the next level. This is just neutral, right? If you want people to treat you nice, just be nice to other people. That's cool, but that's not good enough. I think I want to challenge that and push people to go beyond that and look for ways to leave people better than when you found them. So, so there's an interesting thing happening here is, is that, you know, I was talking about my son earlier. You're, you're trying to find your groove. You're trying to find your tribe or people or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes what ends up happening for a lot of people is because they're, whatever there is, this is a story, but they're small, they're broken, they're alone. And then all of a sudden they end up taking people into their life that are toxic. Right. Right. Whereas you need they, somebody. Yeah. They don't exactly. They don't want to be alone. They'd rather be with this person who tortures them than be alone. And that's mm -hmm. the truth. And it's like, okay, well, we need to start getting to a place to is that you can you can pick your tribe. You can be fussy. Mm -hmm. You have a, a choice, right? And you can start paying attention to the way that people communicate with you, the things that they say. Are they listening to you? So I'm going to give you a, an example. Shout out to uh, Jason Lowe, the founder of Ascended Financial. <laughs> no, uh, for, for real, when I met this guy, Jason, like this is a big deal for me. I've been building my business for eight years. Yeah. And so I'm about, I, I was, a, the decision I was to make was, okay, do I want to, uh, you know, come under your banner do i trust you to coach and mentor me and bring me to the next level or is this going to lit literally i'm going to learn something but is this going to be a waste of my time is it going to end up me being backwards or you know what i'm saying all these things are going yeah. through your head is this the right You're fit for me basically exactly yeah. as much as he's qualifying me do i want right. this guy on my team yeah so the th one of the things that he said to me probably i think the day that i met him in person is he said to me Vern, you don't know how great you are. He said, and I'm going to show you. That was That's one. Profound. Yeah, that was one thing. I, I was like, it was profound for me. I was yeah. like, and I believed him. I'm like, he sees something already, and he believes that he can pull it out. Can so, I ask you? Do, you, do did you in the in that moment? Did you feel like perhaps you seen what he saw? The interesting, you yeah. Gave yourself permission it, yet? It was subtle. Yeah, it was almost like he's, he sees it too. Yeah, you're you're, right. you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And another thing that's deep, right? it, totally and, and to your point about how, supporting each other and whatnot moving forward. So that's one thing that he said to me. And the other thing that he said to me was, I was asking him like, so how's the structure of the business? Like, how does this work? Like, when I write a piece of business, when I connect with a client, is that do I is that my relationship? That's kind of how it works in our business. Is like. Or, is, or does that relationship, that client essentially, belong to Ascendant Financial? Mm -hmm. He goes, no, like, if you bring someone in, that's your client. In fact, if, if essentially, basically, if I, ha if I get a lead from Ascendant Financial, um, there's a way that we split the business, we all make revenue, but that client actually is also my client, like, right? So they're gonna help me build my business. So what I was at, the reason why I was asking him that was, what happens if three, five years down the road, like, you guys go a different direction, or I just wanna do other things? He goes, oh yeah, he goes, look, friend, I'm not expecting somebody just because we're sitting here today to give me their entire life. They're going to sign their life over. He goes, right. you know, he goes, here, here's what uh, this, I don't think this is the words he used. He's like, but here's, here's how it's going to go. 
He's like, we get two or three years down the road. He goes, you learn this process. We build a big business here. Things are going great. And you decide, hey, actually, I want to be, I want to do what you're doing. I want to go be a CEO or I want to build a business like that. Or you want to do something else. He goes, I'm not going to like chain you down and hold you here. He goes, I'll help you. Yeah. I'll show you how I did what I did if you want to go do that. Because yeah. we're going to be fine. You, you yeah. know, like, like that right there, that was another thing that I was like, He's, he's perfect, whole and complete with himself right where he's at. He's not losing anything if I leave or not. I mean, he's gaining if I come, but he's happy to see me go and he wants yeah. to help me. So what I'm saying by picking your tribe, listen to what people are saying to you. Yeah. Like, think about it. People would be joking, but they might say something like, yeah, but if you ever leave, I'll flatten your tires. <laughs> like, like, like it's a joke or whatever, right? But then you, you there think is a subtlety like, to yeah, it becomes real or becomes truth to you, right? Unless, unless it's an ongoing joke that he says in public and behind closed doors, he's told you, hey, look, man, I got your back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You leave tomorrow, and I'll totally take care of you, right? Like, like that. Yeah. But you get what I'm saying. If they, if they're that guy who subtly under under their breath is like. Yeah, fuck, if she cheated on me, I'd cut her throat. Like, whoa, yeah, like, okay, <laughs> that's that's a little, you know. <laughs> revealing. That's a little revealing, you know. Yeah, it does, like, and it goes back to the character of that person. Yeah, what's going on with them that if somebody does them wrong, they'll cut your throat? So like, I get like, that that's a figure of speech, but in other words, that could just mean I'll cut you out of my life. Right. Fuck you, you know, you're gone. Like Speaking that. Anyway. through the metaphor. Right? Yeah, totally. So the idea of your, your own personal programming, like, the idea now is that there is scarcity in the world and you can only have the two or three friends that you get and if you don't you know work super hard to keep them as your friend then you're gonna die you're gonna lose you're gonna be on the out and this comes from our tribe mentality Dude, right? the idea that's that, bang on right and and so helping people if anything else that you get out of all of this helping people realize the abundance that's around us what was i talking about before we got on the podcast fellas how crazy is that i love it <laughs> i love it oh my god well to your point this is a good segue here i'm gonna throw a, a good curveball at you here so what about what about relationship structures so think about what what are you programmed from day one uh, the Princess Bride, mm. the, the the Lady in Distress, mm -hmm. the uh, Prince Charming. It's all about Disney. the one. <laughs> well, yeah, Disney. But the no, Disneyification but, of yeah, society. But, this idea that as a man, it was my job to be Prince. And, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. The Knight in Shining Armor, um, Aladdin. He he showed up and he rescued the princess from her whatever that was. You know what I mean? Right. Depression. The the words happily ever after. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, and, yeah there's and, a permanence yeah. to you know, a destination the, in your life. The yeah. one true love. Mm -hmm. So now we all get programmed from like age two. Soulmates. Right? Soulmates to <laughs> like, you got to find your one. Mm -hmm. You're tr trace. You're going through your whole life now on this invisible race to find this invisible person who totally exists Yo, in your mind. And all these 30 Out of 7 year billion that, people. Yeah, right? All of these 30 year olds that got to this destination we were supposed to be happily married and shit. Like, I'm a prime example of that. I, I went through that. I pushed Oops. for it as hard as I could. My belief was that I was supposed to find a girl, get married, have a kid, and then together we were going to build this empire. Yeah. Right? And, like, and that didn't happen. So, so here's the deal. Like... What if, I mean, you know how you've, you're familiar with things like quantum physics and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I And mean, believe me, I'm no scientist or whatever. But like, it, it, let's just say that we all, we all know that a human being, a man, is just trying to make sense of their environment all the time so that they can stay safe. Right. So that is actually what created, like why all of these social constructs exist. Yes, why you're susceptible to the programming. Right. And, and, and that is actually why they exist. Because there's, and I'm not talking conspiracy shit, even though I'm a big conspiracy theorist, but I'm just saying, like literally, there are people in power who say, okay, this is how it should go. You know, we should, you know, have police and we should have public school and yeah. we should have jobs and like taxes. Like there's a way, oh, in relationships and marriage and kids and university, right? Like, so there's a way in which we do life. Mm hmm. Okay, it's been laid out and it's actually quite good because it's a process. Yeah. So it's like, okay, here's a possible process, Devin, that you could follow so that you don't get confused and you don't swim in, into an ocean of possibilities all by yourself and wind yeah. up in a bad place. You could do life this way. Right. Right. So our current socioeconomic fucking outlay, you could do it that way. Go to school, go to college, get a job, get married, have kids, white yeah. picket Re fence. Retire, die. Yeah. Is there anything wrong with that? Absolutely not. No, thank you. 
However, I love that you just said no. <laughs> um, because, you know, but no, a lot of times everybody wants to oppose it. Right. We don't got to oppose it. We don't no. got to hate on public school system or Some banks people, or that's police. That's exactly what they want in life. And that, that could come from their programming. And I would argue perhaps they may have been programmed into believing that that's what they need. That's what you got to do. If you don't like it, it sucks. Hate right. it. Right? That's another yeah, I thing. I wasn't one of those people. My parents were both entrepreneurs. They both started businesses, okay. several of them. You know what I mean? They always lived life on their own terms. And so I looked at the system evil. Like, uh, I was like no, right. I it just by default, I don't right. want that. It's bad. Exactly. So okay, right. now that's the, that's the devil's advocate on the other side saying right. that my programming told me no. Exactly. Right? I so love it. I, I, but I can't. If, if one exists, I have to acknowledge that equally the other exists as a possibility. Right. And, and every other possibility in between. Right. Exactly. So, so that's my point is like, okay, what would, what would it look like? A, if people knew or were aware of, Hey, there's other ways that you can do life. Yeah. And then if like, if, if society, you know, cause I have it that they have like a grip on it staying that way. Right. If they would actually embrace and support, Hey, you know what? I'm cool. I'm going to stay in this lane. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go and like live in Manila and, and, and raise pigs and you want to have, you know, three wives and, and, a, and, a, and another dude who stays in your house and you have like eight kids yeah. and you just do life that like, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Or, 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 you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, you like, don't it, have to demonize other people's yeah, like, idea of what is good or bad. This is what I really feel works for me. So right. why do you, why do you want to strangle me and bring me over there? I don't understand. Like if this works for me and I'm happier and I'm, whatever that is for you, I'm happier doing this. So thus I'm actually like now a support to you. Cause I'm like empowered. Yeah. Why are you trying to strangle me and drag me back into your pool? I don't get it. And it's, it does. It comes back down to that like level of programming that that other person has had and taught to believe that one is good and one is bad. Right. And this is the structure of religion is that this is oh good boy. and this is bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, actually, I know can, that that's can, Pandora's can, box. Can but... I speak to something there? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You're, you're right in terms of – or not right. You're – there's an occurrence like that for sure, and I'm not, and I'm not a, a, a like a, a religious person. I'll be one of those cliches that say I'm, I'm like an agnostic. I'm a spiritual person, right? I, I met a, I met a, one of my mentors, mentors this week. His name's Ray Potit, and he's uh, we were in Scottsdale, but I think he's in, uh, I want to say Arkansas, no Kansas. He's in Kansas, and uh, Ray Potit is a is a really a very um, de devout. Christian is that the right language? Like it means he's really committed to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like literally, we, he'd be like telling us about stuff, and he, and you can you can you can't deny his passion for life and his contribution because he'd be literally teaching us, mm -hmm. and he'd be talking about stories and impacts that that have had with people and like the difference he's made for them, and he'd just stop for a minute and he'd be like, "Thank you, Jesus, thank you, <laughs> thank you." And I'm, no, but like the thing is, that's is quite it, jarring if it, you're not used to yeah, experiencing something like that. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't corny or tacky or inauthentic i don't care if it's consciousness mm -hmm. like you notice you get a voice in your head and you're like damn that's a good idea and you go do the thing yeah to him that's jesus right do you see what i'm saying yeah. like all the stuff that's produced he's like oh thank you jesus because he believes like that's what he believes and i got a different appreciation and context i'm like you i don't like the system of mm -hmm. religion right but i i really respect and uh the 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 commitment and the passion that people have and if they're actually living it if they're not like well i'm a christian like you know what i mean if they're living so what i got from him is that he's a he's a pure contribution yeah he was talking about doing uh business with um I can't remember another religious another religious group. Mm -hmm. There are a bunch the of Muslims. them. Are his? I don't remember, but a bunch of them were his clients. He's got Muslim clients. He's got uh, he he's, he goes to uh, China mm -hmm. and and does a bunch of charity work over there. My point is, is that he wasn't like, oh, you're not a Christian. Well, we can't have this conversation. That's not how he he was so open and accepting. I was like, damn, this guy's like the actual embodiment of what it's supposed to be his works. Right. Yeah. So I got a whole different context and appreciation for a, that type of spirituality. I was like, damn, I was touched by it, which is a great way to kind of put this all neatly in a little package. The idea that you have to tell people how they should act. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's in your program. The idea that you have to live your life this way. That's in your program. All of this is all programming. So I want to give people 
a way to defeat this as and I don't want to talk about it like it's an evil thing like programming is evil because mm -hmm. some programming is actually really good and there's like we can use a 12 step program as an example like that is a method of programming right some of this could be brainwashing you know what I mean some of this could be you could absolutely call it brainwashing right and and like re really right down it, to it, it it becomes that and so to like to to defeat it right to overcome that the only the only power that you have is to become aware of it so you need to start questioning why you think the way that you think. Where yeah. did these thoughts come from? If, if let's say, for example, when that guy started saying, like, under his breath, thank you, Jesus, whatever, you're, like, first is like, oh, shit, this guy's fucking crazy. <laughs> if that was your, that's your programming. So you've got to ask yourself, why did I think that? Where yeah. did that come from? Yeah. Probably my dad reacted that way or whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? So you kind of got to go down that path and yeah. explore it indefinitely because... As you begin to do that, you start to realize a great percentage of the thoughts that you have are not they, your, own not your own thoughts. I love they it. are thoughts that you've been given or taken on as uh, your own. And you, and you believe they're your thoughts. <laughs> right. Because they're so, happening in your head. And who are you to question what's happening in your right. own head, right? So one of the <clears> things, uh, one of my mentors, Nelson Nash, uh, uh, he's the, the founder of the Infinite Banking Concept. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's interesting about him is the infinite banking concept is all about thinking differently. Right. So he says, it's all about how you think. Mm. It's all about how you think. Right. It's all about how you think. <laughs> every you every word has a different inflection. Yeah. Right. But listen to that. He talks about reading and rereading and ruminating, mm. thinking about what you've just received thinking. So he, so he says, um, a man would rather die than think. Right. Right. Rarely do we think, and rarely do we think about our thinking. Right. Okay. So I got because a, of the programming. That's right. I've got a business opportunity for you. Are you ready? Mm. Hear me out. Okay. So you're gonna give me all of your money, all of it, and I am going to hold it in safekeeping. Okay. And. While it's in my possession, I actually own it, okay? And I can do with it as I choose. However, if you come and you want some of it back, I will give it to you. In fact, I have to give it to you. However, I'm going to give it to you on my terms. <laughs> you have no control over how that goes. Yeah. Fair? Okay, so stay with me. And what I'm going to do with your money is I'm going to promise to keep at least about about 10% of it. So you give me a thousand bucks, I'll actually keep about a hundred of it. But what I'm gonna do with the other 900 is I'm gonna go and loan it to Al. And Al <laughs> is gonna pay me 4% per year, compounded, whatever, I on that doubted. money. So whatever, I'm gonna earn interest off of Al using that money. He's gonna pay me for that privilege of using that Brother, money. you just got robbed. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and here's the deal. What I'll do is I'll give you like a half a percent on your money per year, okay? So now, I'm earning money on your money. Maybe I'll give you nothing. Yeah. Fuck you, right? Yeah, 90% so, of the time, that's where it goes. But here's the deal. <laughs> I, maybe I give you 1%. Now I'm making 3.5% on your money. You're making one, okay? Are you interested? I'm going to have to say hard no. <laughs> what if I told you... You're already doing it. What if I told you, you and all of the people that you know... In fact, most of the people in the world, everybody in North America, not everybody, because I know some people who are not, are unknowingly and unwillingly participating in that business. Yeah. Every day, every minute, every second. I'd say Do you know what it's called? <laughs> you know what that business is called? What's it called, Bern? It's, it's called banking. It's called banking. It's called the commercial <clears throat> banking system. Yeah. And now people are like, oh, here we go. Well, what a great just, system yeah. that's set up if you think about it on the other side of their side. Yes, great. there's nothing wrong with it. It's great. actually brilliant. Here's the deal. The problem with money, the problem with the economy, the problem out there, if you want to call it a problem, is banking, folks. Yeah. Because all of your money goes there. They've got all the money. But here's the most interesting thing about that, the problem. The solution is also banking. Yeah. Uh, I, I would go further. The solution's education. Well, you, well, yeah. You got learning get... more and being in a state of see. I, I find a lot of people want to be right. Where I have a contradicting opinion to that, I want to find right. Yeah. Right? No, and I... so being in a state of opinion versus being in a state of learning, 
is two completely different things. And so when you say this, my first response, like in my programming is to argue against it because I have an opinion. Right. My opinion is, is that it could be this or it could be that or yeah, whatever, yeah, but right? You're entitled to all that. Exactly. I'm, but I'm not sitting here saying that I'm right. Exactly. Right? And so That's to the, defeat, the... yeah, to defeat that, being in a state of learning helps me now understand the That's idea right. that you just said. So now what you're saying, instead of me being opinionated, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And yeah, trying yeah. to defend where I'm at. Right. Again, I'm listening. I'm genuinely listening going, shit, that sounds kind of like a fucked up situation and I should probably do something about it. Oh, <laughs> shit. Right? No, so you're, that's you're, you're, deprogramming yourself and, and being open to the possibilities. The, the wealth of the future is the ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Mm. Amen. <laughs> So, Don't dude. Drop the mic, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, they are very they are expensive. expensive. <laughs> that's that's dope, man. That was really dope what you just said right there. Because you're you're right. Because that's what happens with a lot of people. And one of the first questions that we'll ask people before we start talking about this process is some maybe something to the effect of is like, you know, hey, do you, do you, is there more? To, are you open to learning? Or yeah. Do you think you know everything there is to know about money? Yeah. Oh no, you're always learning. It's Which is such changing. an interesting question because it becomes your own version of, of uh, deconstructing somebody's programming. That's right. Cause You're causing them to think deeply about their programming. They have to respond because they want to be liked by you, right? Mm -hmm. Going back to the uh, state of abundance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want a new you're friend. A, yeah, you're a new friend, right? I'm not at my 150 yet. <laughs> so they're going to say what uh, what you want to hear essentially but it opens their mind they don't even realize what they're doing but it's like now nah, okay yeah, yeah, yeah they're gonna say what they think they you just want give to themselves hear. permission to be open and listen exactly then they give themselves so that's a really really valuable tool that you like anybody can deconstruct that now and apply it mm -hmm. through that questioning you can help open people's minds if there's if there are better solutions out there and yes. this could apply to anybody with any type of business or any other industry if right. you're trying to connect with people yeah. who aren't open or whatever you can ask those open ended leading questions that will bring people into the into the space to learn and be open to what you're offering yeah cuz there's different ways to do every game right right so any doesn't matter what industry you're in yeah it's the same thing here you open to 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 look and at or learning or uh, you know do you consider yourself an open-minded person people obviously <laughs> although if you said the same thing do you consider yourself to be a stubborn person and they're going yeah at times I can be stubborn right because they're going to be agreeable with you so you oh. put them now in the mind frame of being stubborn versus the mind frame of being open-minded by the language that you use and this comes yeah. down to like that's how deep this programming goes this is now deep. look at every marketing message you've ever been fed from every advertisement you've ever seen in your entire life they pre-frame it before you even got there they pre-framed the idea so that you were more susceptible to what they were about to sell you hey do you have a hard time meeting girls yeah I have a hard time meeting girls yeah, yeah we yeah, have yeah. a solution for you right yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. so that's it is like putting you into the right frame of mind by forcing you to think in that state yeah I love I love that man. that's well <laughs> done uh, yeah totally so here get this so you've you ever gotten into a conversation with somebody and they say they're open to learning or something or whatever, but they, they, they keep meeting you with resistance. Right. So let's say, for example, we're having a conversation about you. Yeah, that's like dating, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, despite, despite claiming you know what to do to, say, fix your problem, but you keep making the same mistake over and over in your money, for example. Right. right. So I just say, Devin. Like, and you're not listening to me. I'm wrong. You keep, you know, you, you keep coming back and saying that this thing doesn't work or whatever. Yeah. And I say, look, man, do you, do, do you want to get financially well? Mm. Do you, do you actually want to get well? So check this out. I had a guy and then you get the question like, oh, cause I keep doing the same thing over and over again. And I'm saying, I'm not getting out of it, mm -hmm. but yet I won't even look at your thing. Right. This thing's hurting me and I, I'm aware of that, mm -hmm. but do you want to get well? Yeah. You're complaining about it, but yet you won't do something different. So, uh, check this out. I had a guy, I gave him this book. This is, this is the becoming your own banker, the yeah. unlocking the bank. Concept, right? That's Nelson Nash. And I said, just read, just read this. Okay. So he read the book, but what's interesting is rather than focusing on the value that's inside the book around the process, mm. like actually looking at the process, he came back to me and told me why he wasn't, you know, interested in this learning it, embracing it, whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm cool with that. But he said to me, he goes, here, I'm going to read you the beginning of page 17. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been this in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? 
Okay. When Jesus saw him lying there, he learned that he had been in this condition for a long time. He asked him, do you want to get well? So what he's saying is, is like, and the guy said to me, he goes, I don't want to be, I'm not interested in this book because almost every page starts with something out of the Bible. Oh shit. And I said, there it is. <laughs> uh, and I, I was literally confused as a confused AF when he yeah. told me that. Cause I was like, uh, like I, I couldn't, I it didn't, I didn't even, didn't even register with me. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? He goes, well, I don't want to make my economic decisions based on a book that's, you know, based on a bunch of shit out of the Bible. And I was like, uh, cause that's not what this is right. <laughs> at all. But I was just, I was like, this is so Nelson like, Nash oh, has a, a strong yeah. depth of knowledge or, 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 or relationship with, yes. you know, with his face. something from, from, from a book, another book, yes. right? Some lessons that we took from another book. Uh -huh. And so he's sharing those <laughs> lessons with you. And for some reason, he, your he, programming won't allow he, you to get beyond. Yes. It. <laughs> he made, he made that mean that infinite banking is yeah. like a religious thing or like some, you know what I mean? Right. So he, that's what he was like. I'm not doing this because of, because of that. I has see. nothing to do with the process, nothing to do with the numbers, nothing to do if it actually would benefit me. It's all about, well, that's one of the major reasons. Yeah. Anyway, and another thing about that, though, is the Bible, the fucking, pick any book in the world. If I open it up and read something, those words right there, you've been there for a while, bro. Like, <laughs> do you want to get let's, wild? Let's like, what, do you, what, go what are you doing the book, there? Replace Jesus with Greg. Yes. And let's have this conversation one more time. Yeah. Greg right. said, you've been sitting here for a long time. Do you want to get well? Hey, man. And all I, of a sudden, it doesn't carry that same connotation with uh, it, but people can't get beyond that barrier hey, hey brother, because of their you, program. Are you aware that you have a, a spike in your ass? <laughs> you have a spike in your ass, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that the spike is there. Does that feel good? No, actually, it's killing me. Uh, <laughs> do you see my confusion here? Do you want to get well, sir? Cool. Do can you want to you gonna do something I mean, about I can that? help you with this. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> I, get, I get that's extreme. But yes. anyway, man, it's just it's brilliant. It's brilliant how. Uh, no, it's crazy because it, it does put it into context. It really does. This is the level at which people are programmed and they don't even realize it. This is how deep it runs. Is it just clinging like, to it? Your first thought <laughs> is to go to that rather than you know the the level of aid or help that you can get. And you know what? Further to that, probably is like one of his friends who's like anti-religious. He didn't want to look bad in front of his anti-religious friend being a part of a religious organization. You know what I mean? Like so now. Now he's now he's letting that other uh, the outside influence and the outside programming deeply affect him and change the way that he wants to live his life. Or it could have been like who knows? It could have been a bad experience could, or whatever. Yeah. Who knows? But the but I just find it interesting because it, it ties into just how pervasive the the program, whatever mm -hmm. the program may be yeah. in your head, if it's about yourself or this or that or whatever, it doesn't matter. It just and there's so many of them running and like the job is to like explore and let them go. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Just that's the whole job. That's, I think that's like the key to peace, right? Run, realize all these shit, all the shit that's running you. Yeah. Everything that's in the background that's, that's running this, your life. This is literally the basis of, and foundation of all mental illness. Damn. That's then, how, that's how really, really deep that actually goes. Yeah. That's crazy. The programming that you put in your own mind, the, the way that you react to certain situations, like, now you now you create those loops and those programs right, in your right, mind right. about how you deal with life. Yeah. And then it be, now you become depressed and that depression separates you from people right. because you become toxic and people don't want you around. But then it reinforces nobody likes me. And so you create these loops, right? right, right that right. depression leads to some sort of trauma. And then in that trauma, you, you, you have PTSD and you have narcissism and you get this divide. And then eventually, like this could go so deep right, through right, those right. programs you can divide your personalities and all of a sudden you're schizophrenic Damn. and people are trying like scientists are trying to correct this with chemicals because you have a chemical imbalance but the purpose like i get it yeah yeah, yeah. chemicals I will you're, solve you're not, the chemical imbalance but it's not going to solve the reason mm. the chemical imbalance exists right it just goes way you have deeper to, yeah you have to correct that chemical imbalance and that starts with your programming and and, and the depth of uh, the control that you have over your own mind and your yeah, own yeah. thoughts and you know what? A lot of people won't even accept that as a possible reality because they don't want to be the reason why. Well, they, well, they, they won't accept. Well, no, he has a mental con condition, dude. Like it's a mental. Right. It's like okay, I, I've I, been, I got it. I've been medically <laughs> diagnosed with yeah. everything under the sun. Yeah, I just, promise you, everything that you could have had, I've had, and 
I, it was not until very recently in the last year, I, I was in the hospital. I basically thought myself to death. I was in and out of the hospital, uh, like fainting, passing out, like just falling over. Like I was so bad and I couldn't figure out why. Now here's the program, right? I looked to my body. My body told me I'm anxious. That anxiety got reconfirmed in my mind. And so now I'm like, oh shit, I, maybe I feel dizzy. Oh, maybe I'm this, maybe I'm weak. Oh no. And all of these things became reality because of how I was thinking about it. Right. Now, meanwhile, I'm in and out of the hospital. I'm getting blood tests. I'm getting MRIs. They're scanning my brain. They're looking for cancers and all this shit. And they keep coming back with, man, you're completely fine. Sounds like psycho cybernetics, man. Why am I dying then? Why am I walking with my girlfriend and then just collapsing on, on the bridge? Like, this is real shit that was happening to me. So I had to go and look deeper. I had yeah, to go yeah, and yeah. look for why. And this has been a problem for me since I was in high school, which we talk, like alluded to earlier. For sure, yeah. It's, it's been a problem for me since then, and I've just slowly spiraled down. And it, it wasn't until I finally accepted responsibility. Yeah, 100%. I, and, and when I finally accepted responsibility, perhaps I'm doing this to myself. That was when everything started changing. I started doing a little bit of uh, mental mental work, like inner dialogue, changing yeah, my yeah. inner dialogue. I um, I started doing some meditation. I started doing some breathing exercises. Nice. I started doing working on some of these. Shout out to Joe Dispenza, right? One thousand percent, Joe Dispenza, hundred percent, and the Wim Hof method, the Ice Man, the guy yeah, that yeah, can yeah. swim in the in the water. Yeah, I've been knocking out cold showers from time to time. Yo, at le every other shower that I have is a cold shower. Every other shower I do, and it's uncomfortable. But mm. the the results. Well, how do you feel after? Off. Like just shock of the I body cured, and shit. I'm not even joking when I say this, and I I almost don't even want to say it in case I jinx it. But I literally <laughs> cured my own allergies. I used to be allergic to everything. My nose would be stuffed up. I'd be running. My eyes are all constantly watering. I feel, <laughs> feel great. <laughs> I th and I'm not on any drugs. I don't take it. I used to I have headaches daily. I used to literally carry Advil with me everywhere I went so that I could deal with my headaches. But in doing these things like meditation and, and practicing the deep breathing and having cold showers and things like that, <clears throat> I've changed my physio like the physical form of my body. I am creating and building a new body. You could almost because say of that. that you're giving it a new program. Exactly.